So let's review what we've covered in Unit 3. Unit 3 is about different types of time, or different types of time intervals. Coordinate time, proper time, and the space-time interval. The coordinate time we've seen before. Coordinate time is measured by an observer in an inertial reference frame with a clock or a pair of synchronized clocks. And um, relativity, in particular, the requirement that light speed, c, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, is the same in all reference frames. The speed of light is the speed of light, no matter who you are or what you're doing. Um, that this statement leads us to conclude that coordinate time is frame independent. That observers in different reference frames will measure different coordinate time intervals. And in the first example, we saw one observer in one reference frame saying these events are simultaneous and another event, uh, another observer in a different reference frame saying no, they're not simultaneous at all. So coordinate time is frame dependent. Um, another way of saying that is that time is not absolute. It's not that there's just one time for everybody. Um, observers in different reference frames disagree on uh, coordinate time intervals. And the symbol for coordinate time interval um, is usually taken to be delta t. We've talked about other types of time intervals as well. One is the space-time interval, and that's um, as follows. It's a time interval between two space-time events measured by an inertial clock that's present at both events. So here I've got a clock, it starts at event A, it goes to event B. It's an inertial clock, so it's moving at a constant velocity. So that would look like a straight line, a straight world line on a space-time diagram. And there's one and only one straight world line corresponding to that constant velocity that will connect those two events. So there's no, nothing ambiguous about the space-time interval. And on a spatial map, like the map of Manhattan, New York City, um, thanks. I should say the space-time interval. The space-time interval is analogous to distance, the distance between two points. And the typical symbol um, for a space-time interval is delta s. Proper time is another type of time interval. And that's a time interval between two space-time events measured by one clock that's present at both events, but that clock need not be inertial. It doesn't have to be moving at a constant velocity. It could circle around, it could accelerate, change directions, and so on. So that type of time is, uh, is called proper time, proper in the sense of own, being the property or owned by that particular clock. And its value depends on the world line taken by the clock as it moves from one event to another. On spatial maps, proper time is analogous to path length. There are many possible paths that connect two points in space, and those paths would have different lengths. Likewise, in space-time, there are many possible world lines that would co uh, connect two events in space-time, and a clock moving along that world line would measure a different time interval. The standard symbol for proper time is delta tau. All right. So the space-time interval and proper time are different. So in general, delta s does not equal delta t. And um, this was experimentally tested in 1971. There have been other tests of this as well. Um, but this was a particularly nice test, the clocks on airplanes. And this confirmed that proper time and the space-time interval indeed are not the same. And lastly, let's say a little bit about distance and the space-time interval. So these are both special, and let me say what I mean by that. They're special in that they're independent of our choice of coordinate system or reference frame. Regardless of how, what type of grid we use to measure difference, which direction we think north is, the distance between two points in space is the same, no matter how we sort of orient our measuring devices. Same is true for the space-time interval in special relativity. No matter what reference frame you're in, the space-time interval between two events will be the same. And so we think of distance and space-time interval as measuring something 
deeply real, a physical, a real thing. It's an aspect of the world that does not depend on our arbitrary choice of reference frame or origin or coordinate system. So distance in studying space and geometry is, is fundamental. And we know um, a formula for distance, uh, delta x squared plus delta y squared square root. And I guess we can think of that as being the Pythagorean theorem, but I, I sort of think of this as playing an even more important role here in that um, this formula tells us how to measure distance, and it's what enables us to do geometry. All right, geometry is a study of distances, and so we need to know how to measure distance. This is, tells us how to measure or compute distance. Is there a formula for the space-time interval that's like this? The answer is yes. And it turns out it's not exactly what you would think. It's not just delta x squared plus delta t squared square root. So um, figuring out the formula for the space-time interval will be the topic of the next unit, unit four. So this brings us to the end of unit three. In the next unit, we'll derive a formula for the space-time interval. This is a formula known as the metric equation, and we'll see that the metric equation is the key to understanding the geometry of space-time. See you then.